Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at network attached storage for Privacy Day. So this way you can do it yourself without having to use somebody else's cloud server. Let's take a look right after this. So one of the things that you can do is you can take a, a, a Linux server, you can stand it up, and then you can share a file system from that with your workstation. And that workstation can be Linux, it can be a Mac, and it can be a Windows, or it can be a combination. Uh, there are a number of other ways that you can use NASs as well, but for today what we're going to concentrate on is just two of the most, three of the most popular ones. So let's, let's dive in a little bit and see what we've got. Let's say that you want to set up a NAS, but you're not sure which protocol that you should use. So there's really four. SSHFS is a, an extension of the secure shell protocol. And there's also NFS, of course, which has been around a long time. That's the network file, uh, network file system. There's also server message block, which is commonly found in Windows today. I've heard a number of people equate SMB with CIFS, and they're not the same things. They do share the same protocol, but CIFS is meant for fault tolerance. It's, it's meant to, if, if you, in a normal SMB, you would have one server servicing your file system in the event of a, of a crash, you're done. I mean, but at CIFS, you can define multiple servers to fail over. So it, that is really the purpose of CIFS. So they're not the same. So if somebody says that they're the same, no, they're not. <laughs> they're not the same at all. Uh, SSHFS is a client side uh, mount capability using Fuse. Fuse allows you to create file systems in user space. Typically in Linux, you have to go to the kernel developers and say, hey, I got this idea for a new file system, and they'll say, great, how long have you had it? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, uh, it takes a while to get a file system inter introduced into the Linux kernel. So uh, Fuse allows us to create file systems and then bring them up and use them immediately without having to wait for the kernel developers to give us access to it. But uh, the advantage, it is actually just an extension of uh, the uh, secure SFTP protocol. The only, the only difference is, is that SSHFS allows you to, to create a, a mount point on your workstation and then mount it. There's a number of, um, there's a number of uh, uh, file managers on Linux that have this capability built into it. Dolphin is one of them. Uh, and so, yeah, I've shown, I think I've shown that before on the channel, but I'm going to show you how you can just do this in from the command line. And then uh, also, I might, I don't know if Ubuntu, Ubuntu does this or not, but we can try. Uh, but it, it provides basically file access and file transfer and file management because you actually have a mount point. So it's an extension to SSH protocol version two. So if you have, if you're using an older version of Linux that has an older version of SSH, this isn't going to work for you. So you have to have at least 2.0 or higher in order for this to work. NFS was originally developed by Sun Microsystems way back in the early 80s, but it isn't just you know it isn't stale. NFS is continuing to be enhanced and it's been evolving over time. It, they don't make a lot of changes to it. I mean, it, we're up to version 4.2 right now. Mostly the the it, things that have been added to it allow it to kind of meet some of the more advanced file systems and the more advanced thinking with file systems like uh, server-side clone copies and application input-output advice, sparse files, space reservation application data block. I might cover these in a future video, but that's not important for today. <clears throat> the other thing is some of the major enhancements came in version 4.1. The uh, NFS did not originally have the ability to be encrypted end to end. Version 4.1 gave us that capability and it is uh, provided by uh, Kerberos. 
So if you have uh, Kerberos uh, installed, or if you want to take the time to install, and believe me, it is not trivial to set up a Kerb server. But once you have that set up, you can then configure NFS for end-to-end -end encryption. I'm not going to go there today. That's not important again for this video. Uh, there's also parallel NFS, which allows for high-performance NFS when you have uh, a cluster of file, of file servers that you are using as the basis of your shares, your network shares. But we're not going to go into that one either. That again isn't important for today's video. What we're trying to, we're just let's take let's. I always believe in the crawl run, uh, the crawl walk run uh, way of going about things. So first you crawl and you get things kind of working. Then you get it. Then then you walk and that allows you to uh, start to enhance it and make it a little faster. And then you run once you set you're satisfied that you have made enough configuration changes to get the performance where you want it. So, all right, enough of that. So the uh, server message block protocol was designed by IBM. No, sorry, it wasn't developed by Microsoft. That was then in 1983, and it allows, uh, it was a, a provided to allow file access, of course, and then it provided support for printers as well as serial ports. Uh, the serial ports had a number of functions, <clears throat> one, the least of which was being able to access the internet because in those days we had modems that we used and uh, SMB would allow you to share those. Also, you could share your mouse and uh, other serial devices that were around at the time. Microsoft took that code, the SMB code, uh, and they merged it into their land manager product in the early 1990s. So. Uh, a couple of years later, Microsoft added it to Windows for Workgroups, and that's the first time I remember seeing it. Uh, but it was, but SMB was never really a, designed to run on TCP/IP. Originally, it was for NetBIOS and NetBuoy, which was the old LAN manager and PC um, LAN manager that was around. Also, uh, I think IPX used it uh, as well. So. Yeah, it's all gone now, it, and there's a very thin layer of TCP IP that's now inserted in SMB, so it works just fine over a normal TCP IP connection. The most version, the most current version of it is version 3.11, and that provides end-to-end -end encryption as well using AES uh, GCM 128. So uh, that protocol is... I mean, you might look at that and go 128-bit, but remember, AES is really strong. Uh, 128 is borderline uh, viable. I mean, most people prefer 256 today. Uh, but, you know, AES is, we're not talking, this isn't like SHA-256. The, the AES is a very, uh, a very strong uh, protocol for encryption. So, yeah, it, it would take you a few million years to break it, <laughs> to break it, but... Uh, there are there are uh, servers today that could uh, that that can do it uh, within somebody's lifetime, but yeah, I mean, if as long as you're over a hundred years, you're fine. Uh, but that's my just my opinion. So if you want encryption, all three of them will provide it. Just a man a, a level of effort to get there. NFS, of course, is the most rigorous. I won't say difficult. It's just a lot of steps to get there. SMB is fairly trivial, and uh, SSHFS has it already built in. There's nothing you have to do there. Uh, NFS, uh, yeah, so that's all I need to tell you about that. There is a, uh, on SMB, there's a global configuration called SMB encrypt equal required, and, uh, and that will turn it on. Uh, but just be aware that if you have older clients, you'll need to set up an SMB share that is not encrypted, and you can do that on Linux. Uh, I don't believe Windows Server will do that, and I don't think Windows 10 will do that either. Uh, I know that in in, uh, in my experience with the encryption part of SMB on Windows 10 is it will fail if I'm on an older client now. <laughs> I don't know what older, I mean, that'd probably be, uh, that would have to be Windows 7, and of course that's not supported today, and XP is also <laughs> not supported anymore either, but... If you do have clients that are running those older SMB protocols, just be aware with a Windows Server, it will fail to connect. Uh, and I, I don't think that has ever been addressed to the best of my knowledge. Whereas in Linux, you can, you can have shares that are unencrypted and encrypted uh, all on the same server. So that is one major difference in the way uh, Linux does things. So... Uh, <clears throat> 
today I'm I'm this is a I'm getting ahead of myself here, so I'm not going to go any further with this. This is for next week. We're going to talk about uh, you know which one should you choose, and we'll do a benchmark on how to do that. So let's uh, let's uh, let me stop for a second, and I'll get ready. Now let's go over to the server and get busy installing this. Okay, so I have two windows open here, and uh, this is my server on clear. MSI One is my client, so the first place we want to go is take a look and see what we've got here. I am running a Linux uh, uh, kernel 5.8, and I am running Ubuntu 20.10 server. Uh, I am not. This is, of course, not a desktop over on this on the uh, server side, and then over here. <coughs> I'm running 5.8. Also running Ubuntu 20.10 over here. And it's just mainly I'm doing this uh, with the same level of code. You can use, uh, you know, whatever your choices are. It's just that the package names may be a little bit different. If you prefer Fedora, if you prefer Arch, if you prefer uh, uh, Linux Mint or MX, they'll all have similar features to what I'm going to show you today. Now, of course, the package managers will be a little different, so between some of those. But <clears throat> let's say, uh, all right, so let's, let's, I'm going to start with NFS today. And so, what do I need to do to get NFS running? So, the first thing I would need to do would be to find out what, what package I need. So, let's do a search on NFS. Oh my goodness, there's just a ton of them here. So I'm just going to roll back here for a minute. I'm going to roll past the one I want, which is, this is actually the one, oops, that's actually the one I want, NFS kernel server. But you'll notice this one called NFS Ganesha. Uh, Ganesha is for Ceph and Gluster file systems. And the, the reason why it's offered as a different package is because it, Ceph and Gluster both will fail over. So if you have a file system that fails on Ceph or Gluster, that could take down your mount point because your mount point is associated with one of the servers. Uh, Ganesha allows you to specify multiple servers in the Ceph pool or the, uh, or the Gluster pool so that if one of those goes down, it will switch over to the other. And of course, your file systems are going to run crippled, but you'll still be, you know, still be able to process until the other Gluster or Ceph server comes back online. We're not going there today. Don't worry. <laughs> that would take longer than I have today to do this video. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and install it. I've already done that, so it's just going to come back and say, hey, you've already done this. So, yeah. <clears throat> the next thing I'll need to do is I'll need an export file, and I've already created one. So, But before we go there, let's do a man on exports and see what is in this. So it's a table of local physical file systems on the NFS server that's accessible to the client. So in other words, you actually have to tell NFS what you want to share. Otherwise, it shares nothing. So uh, yeah, this is all up to you on how you do this. And there's a program called Export FS that is used to control which ones are actually exposed. So you have a file that's associated with it, and that's the exports. And then, and then you have an application, a service called Export FS, which talks to the NFS client, uh, or excuse me, the server, in order to expose that file system to the clients. So yeah, you can have single host, you can have IP networks. So you can, you can basically limit who can access the NFS share. And you can do that by IP address, you can do it by segment or IP segment or subnet, or you can say, oh, I just want to make it available to anything that has my part of my DNS name in it. So yeah, yeah. so you can use wildcards in there. There's also all kinds of security. There's async, which allows the, it to violate the NFS protocol. To, <laughs> we will be using async today for performance. Um, Let's see. Uh, one of the other ones I use is no subtree check. 
that has some implications for security, but if a subdirectory is exported, then the whole file system isn't. So, uh, yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't go down through all of it. Uh, it just is a little bit more performant. And let's see, what else? There's parallel NFS if you want to enable, enable that. So yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah. I don't. I don't really think I need to go there today. Now, no root squash. So <clears throat> this says it's for discless clients, but actually, what it does is that. Normally, if uh, root squash is on and a root user uh, opens the, on the client side, opens the connection, it will, uh, NFS will change that automatically over to nobody. So no root squash just basically says you, you don't need to do that. So the root will maintain its, its uh, priority. You can also override, uh, you, can, you can also override the options. And sometimes on Mac servers that are running NFS, they will override uh, by default They when you set up an NFS uh, server back in the day when you could do that. Uh, you can still do it, but it takes a little bit longer to do it. Now, Big Sur is having some issues with NFS. I don't recommend NFS servers on Apple Mac OS because Apple has not maintained it. Uh, they don't care about it and so because they want you to use their cloud service. Uh, they still support SMB, probably like a hangman supports a rope, but they... They still support SMB on it, and that seems to work okay. I don't. I haven't tried it. I, I, I don't use cloud services, so I, I use a different way of doing things, and, and I'll talk about that today when we get into it. So, what do I have in my exports file? Let's let's just talk about that. So, slash NAS. That is the that is the the directory that I want to share out over the network. And I'm saying anybody that has a .macknife.info. Now, <laughs> is that a good security practice? Probably not. You probably, what you really want to do is use IP addresses because you could spoof that. Uh, this is read write. I'm allowing people to read write to that particular share. I have async on, I have no subtree check and no root squash. Those are more or less for performance reasons. Uh, NFS can be quick and it can be slow, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, there's a number of, I'm not going to get into that today, but when we talk about that in the benchmark, I'll talk about some of the things you can do to enhance its performance. So, all right. So uh, the way you do this, let's see if um, my NFS service is up. And you do that by a status on NFS server, and so we'll do that. Yeah, it's up. The other, <clears throat> the other uh, way you can look at this, uh, I think you have to be suited to do that. So export FS, and that'll show you the current mount. Now, if you make changes to the file, the easiest way to do this is flush it. And then if I run that, oh, it didn't flush. But we, we can pick up the new the uh, new things here this way and then you can check it again to make sure there um by the way there's um I think mount stats oh there's no mount stats on this side it's only client i'll show you that that you can actually if you want to get into performance tuning with this you can actually do it so I, as i'm done on the server for nfs the only thing i need to do now is go back over here and actually uh i need to unmount my old one <clears throat> Let's see where I'm at with it. That might be good, huh? Where, which which directory did I have it on? Uh, so it's on NAS2. So we'll go ahead and unmount that. And um, I don't think, I I don't know if I have this in my FS, stat, FS tab or not. No. So... I did create a, I think, huh, maybe not.
Let's see what we got here. The only thing I really need to do is, is specify NFS4. Now there's a number of options we can set, but for today, all I'm gonna do is, I'm, this is my server and the share. So clear is my server and the share is slash NAS, and then all I have to do is tell it where I want it. The NFS4 just makes sure that it tells the server that, hey, this is, this is what I want to use I want to use this version of the protocol now if you want to use a specific version like if you if you want to use uh, 4.1 or 4.2 you can specify that as a dash o and there's instructions in the mount dash that that nfs for how to do that so <clears throat> i'm not going to do that today but there is uh and then we can put in nas2 and this will actually give you information about what's going on with your NFS server. So uh, it tells you where it's connected and it also tells you what capabilities are turned on by default. So you, these are your flags. These are all the flags that you have uh, options that you can then set in here, including these are the ones that determine how large uh, a file size, what your read and write sizes are. And there is a maximum I think it's a gig that you can set for the read size and the write size buffer. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then there's the byte counts as, as the as it gets used. Uh, these will come into play, and then the there it'll show you where what type of I/O is the most heavy. So uh, let's see. There's I think there's uh, it should be read at the top here and write, but I don't see them yet. But if you find that you are, you know, over time, if you're more write heavy, then you might want a performance tune to write, uh, to enhance your write performance. If you're, read, if you're read heavy, about the only thing you can really do is set up more memory for your client. So you know, just the, about the only thing is if it's slow on read, go get some memory and stick it in the box. Uh, and then the, if you're get attribute, there's some things that you can do if you're doing a lot of those. Uh, in order to, to uh, help help relieve that so much. And there's some information here. This is your backlog wait time. So if you've got a number of requests that are queued, this is how long on average requests are waiting for the server to actually do something. RTT is the return trip time. So that's the average amount of time that is being spent from the time you make a request until the request is satisfied. So that's how long it's spending in the server. And then there's the there's some other things like how many bytes and how many operations are being done on each of these particular NFS calls. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's, so we have it mounted. Now I've, been, I've already done this part right here, but you can, you can go down here to your other locations and choose computer find your mount point and then you can just drag it over here to a bookmark now, this is now on there are some of these that allow you to actually uh you can make the connection and i think you can here too if i remember right somewhere uh, somewhere Anyway, somewhere in here, there's the ability to do that where you can actually uh, put the requests in to actually connect. But for today, let's now I've already got some stuff here. Let's go ahead and clean this up. And it's just like any other normal file system, right? So I'm going to create a new copy of this of my file manager and we'll just we'll copy some stuff over. We'll get crazy. We'll just put a couple things over there. And then after a minute, it'll it'll start up. And then this, because we're now writing stuff, should start to show me some stats on what's going on. So yeah, it's got a lot more of them in here now. Um, I think I can do a minus V. Nope, that's the version. All right, so let's see. Read directory, we, yeah. Uh, FS info, we should have a create in here, obviously. 
anyway, you can look through that. <clears throat> There's a lot of different things you can do. So that's NFS. Um, <clears throat> pretty simple. Let's go off and uh, do another one. I'm going to leave that all up, and I'll just push these over top of it so that we can go back to our server side. The next one I want to do is, is uh, Samba. And so what do we need to do that one? That's right. Let's do a search for it. All kinds of stuff again. So for the server, what I really need is just this, just Samba by itself. And it will install a number of other things. Um, when we get to the client side, we will probably put some other stuff in here. Oh, and by the way, on the client side over here, you need, I forgot to say mention this is NFS common. So you will need NFS common installed on the client side. Sorry about that, skip that. So we'll need to install Samba. And it's already done. Then there's a configuration file here as well, and that's stored in Samba, and it is called smb.conf. I also need to be sudo to do this, to do anything with it. Um, let's go down through it here just a little bit. So uh, there's a, yeah, the, the, if you want to change this work group, you can uh, if to match whatever you have for your Windows domain. So it, it is, if you have a, a domain server, it, it, uh, Samba is smart enough to use that and you can describe that as well. Uh, or you can use a work group if you don't have a, uh, an NT, a uh, Windows server domain up and running. This probably is a little bit more information than I would want to expose, uh, especially given the fact that people do uh, NMAP. But you know, if they see the protocol port open, they're gonna know it's, uh, it's, uh, Sam, it's SMB protocol anyway. So, I, but you might not want to tell them that it's Ubuntu. You might want to turn that off. And there's logging and panic action and server role. This is a standalone. This is setting up to synchronize the Unix passwords, although I can tell you I, it probably works. I just haven't ever been successful with it. We will use the SMB password to create users and I'll show you how to do that. But uh, we'll come all the way down here. Now by default, at the end here, these are enabled. So it turns on printers and printer drivers, which I don't have any printers, so I just turned those off. And you can do that with a semicolon. This one I actually created. So this is SM, this is Samba Share, uh, and this is wrong. <laughs> so let's clear, let's fix that because that bar was borrowed from another machine. And we'll save that. And then uh, my path, this is the, again, the local directory that I want to share out. It is the same as NFS, and that's okay. You can get away with that. It's not recommended because you, you know, unless you're servicing clients that don't have the capability to do SMB, and so maybe what you're doing is just providing an access point for them. Uh, read only, it means that, no, it means that I can write to the file. It's kind of weird how, uh, SMB protocol works, it's reverse logic. Uh, typically when I program, I go the opposite way. I, I do the positive first, not the negative, and this is a negative, this is bad coding. But anyway, that's that's been in there for a while and nobody's probably ever gonna change that again. Uh, browsable is yes, um, so it means that you can list the contents of the file. So now they revert back <laughs> to <laughs> to uh, positive protocol. So. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's it, uh, it's not the best in the world, I tell you that. So, how do I how do I get this to recognize that particular configuration? So, all you do is take your system control and restart SMBD. So that's all you need to do, and then that'll pick that up. There's there's also um, an SMB status command, but I think I have to be root to do that. Yep. And as connections come into the system, I'm already connected, but it will show you who the user is and uh, what connections they have uh, currently in use. And then it'll show you their IP address uh, and, and all that stuff. And, it'll, and this has partial AES, so it's, it's just encrypting the credentials as they go over. So on the client side, you would install 
I think it's Samba Common. I guess we better go look for it. I'm pretty sure it's Samba Common. Uh, yeah, Samba Common right there. If you need that one. You might also install CIFS Utils. Uh, it's just a different option that you can turn on. So, uh, and you can mount the as a type CIFS if you want. Uh, so, yeah, so once you've done that, you would then do um, here. So there's my mount, and uh, I'm using type CIFS, which means that you have to have the CIFS utils, and you can get those. And again, I've already done that one. So uh, these are the options you pass. User Pi, you don't have to give it the password. It will prompt you on uh, on the, the first mount for the password to it. And then I'm just saying preserve my user ID and password. And then this is the name of the share that we created on the server side. And that is the directory where I want to mount it. And of course, I've already done that. And there's my Byte magazine thing that's in there. And I have also put that there. So let's let's just go and try something. Let's go to, let's put a video file, about 3.6 meg. Should be good. It's, it's done. Uh, let's try a little bit bigger one maybe. I thought I had some bigger ones. Ah, there's there's a pretty good size one. All right, let's drop that one and see how long that takes. Now, what is is interesting on how uh, uh, Samba works is that it lies. All right, so um, it actually will come. It actually buffers the right first, and then it actually completes it. So that's that long delay in the front and the back. So yeah, so it looks like it's really fast, but it's not. It's it's still taking the same amount of time as anything else. But uh, yeah, but you will notice that it does show up on my share for NFS as well. And so that proves that we are connected. So the last one that we want to talk about today is SSH SSHFS. So I don't have to do anything on the server other than make sure that. Well, I shouldn't say I don't have to do anything. I do have to do something. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I, I keep stepping over uh, skip steps here. And then you would do a minus A and then whoever the user is. Now I've already done that. So, uh, yeah. So you do SMB password. You have to set that up and then it allows you to enter a password for that user. You'll need to do that before any user can actually mount this. So that's how that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and close this because I'm done with this side of it. <clears throat> uh, you do need to have OpenSSH uh, server installed on the server, and that's it. So over here, you'll need this, SSHFS. And it, it will automatically install the Fuse client and everything else that it needs. So but I've already got that installed. You can see it's version 3.6.0. So how do I mount this? Be right back. So there's my mount uh, command for this one. It's SSHFS and then whichever encryption cipher you want to use. And like I said, there's Blowfish you can use AES, you can use ARC4. I think there's one that if you have a slower machine and you don't have AES NI support, now this will use that. So if your hardware supports AES encryption and decryption within the Intel chip, and I think that's also on the AMD as well, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I don't have an AMD processor to test it with, but if you do have AES-NI turned on, your performance will be about 180% faster 
using the onboard encryption and decryption of your processor. Uh, if you are using an older processor, and there and those would be pre two thousand and ten, I think. Uh, but if you're you're back in that vintage, you might want to consider using RC four. RC four is the fastest cipher uh, that you can get for older hardware. You you won't want to use AES. It'll it'll be far too slow. So just just a word of the wise. Also, you can turn compression on or off if you want for the file going across. I don't want to do that because uh, because <clears throat> compression will actually increase the file transfer for binary files. Uh, server at alive count max and server alive intervals. Those are just performance statistics to allow for the max for the average you know load on the server. And then pi at clear.macknife.info is the name of my server. This is the same format you use for SSH. And then you add a slash NAS for the directory that you are wanting to attach. And then where do you want to attach it to? Test dir2. So uh, I already have this running. And we can look at it here. It's uh, this is the that's the Samba share, and this is the uh, SSHFS directory. So let's uh, let's go in there. That's that's uh, I don't have that one, so let's add it. I think it's this one. Yep. So there's test directory two. Let's. Uh, Let's try, oh, I don't know. Um, let's try a, yeah, go over there. You go down here. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Let's try the 600 megabyte binary file and see how long this takes. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, considering that that is encrypted, that is, that's a 600 megabyte file. And, you know, I'm only on a one gig network. I'm not on a 10 gig here. So, it's not bad. So I, I guess the question is, which one of these, which one of these should you choose? Which one's best? That we'll have to wait until next time when we get into doing the benchmarks. And until then, uh, try it out. Try to install it. And, and next time we'll talk about how to do some performance tuning and get the maximum performance out of your system. Hope to see you again next time. And bye for now.